This is part 21 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss generating form groups and form controls dynamically at runtime. This is continuation to our previous video, part 20. So please watch part 20 before proceeding. Here is what we want to do. On our create employee form, we want to include this add skill button. Every time we click this button, we want to generate another set of these three skill related fields, skill, experience and proficiency. So our first step here is to include the required HTML for add skill button. This is straightforward HTML. The only bit of Angular code here is the click event binding. We are binding the click event of the button to this method add skill button click within our component class. We don't have this method yet, we'll create it in just a bit. The rest of it is straightforward HTML with some bootstrap styling classes. So let's include this HTML within our create employee form. Here is our create employee component view template. So inside the bootstrap well, but outside of the skills form array, let's include our add skill button. We don't have this add skill button click event handler method within our component class. So let's create it now. I'm going to place it just after ng on init lifecycle hook. This method is not going to return anything. So let's set the return type to void. Now from a technical standpoint, let's understand what should happen when we click the add skill button. When we click the button, we want to generate another form group that contains these three form controls, skill, experience and proficiency. And we want to push that newly generated form group into the skills form array. The skills form array is right here. It is defined within our root form group, employee form. Now first, we need to get a reference to the skills form array. So within the event handler, let's use our root form group. On that, we use the get method and to the get method, we pass the name of our form array, which is skills. Notice from the IntelliSense, this get method is returning an abstract control. And remember, abstract control is the parent class for form control, form group and form array. We know skills is a form array. So let's explicitly typecast the returned control to form array. If you're wondering why are we doing this? Well, we want to push a new form group into the skills form array. For that, we're going to make use of the push method. But on this abstract control class, notice we don't have the push method. It is defined on the form array class. That's the reason we are explicitly typecasting the returned value to a form array. For typecasting, we use angle brackets. And whatever this get method returns, we want to typecast that to a form array. Notice now, after we have typecasted it to form array, we can see the push method. To this push method, we want to pass the form group that should be added to this skills form array. Remember, in our previous video, we have created this method, add skill form group. This method returns a form group that contains our three skill form controls, skill name, experience and proficiency. So within this push method, let's call this add skill form group method. At this point, let's save our changes and take a quick look at the browser. Notice at the moment on the UI, we have one set of input elements for skill related fields. And in the form values here, we have our form array skills. Notice the pair of square brackets right here. And within the array, we have just one form group for all the three skill related fields, skill name, experience in years and proficiency. Now look what happens when I click this add skill button. So within the form values in our skills form array, we now have two form groups. That's our first form group and that's our second form group. If I click it one more time, now we have three form groups within our skills form array. But look at the UI. We only have one set of input elements. Now to be able to dynamically generate these input elements for every form group in the skills form array in the view template, we have to loop through it. So let's do that now. In the view template, on this form array name div, let's use ng for structural directive to loop over all the skill form groups that we have in the skills form array. I'm going to name the variable skill because we are looping over an array of skill form groups. We know the skills form array is present in our root form group, 
employee form so on our root form group we're using the get method and passing it the name of our form array skills to get a reference of it within the form array we have an array of form groups to get to them we use controls property on the form array let's save all our changes so far and take another look at the browser notice now when i click the button both the input elements and the form groups within the skills form array are dynamically generated at the moment in the ui we have three sets of input elements and within the skills form array we have three form groups now notice this form group name directive for all the dynamically generated form groups we are setting the same name zero at the moment we have three form groups here within the skills form array and for all those three form groups the name is the same which is zero let's actually prove that let's launch browser developer tools now we want to inspect this first skill name text box so right click and select this option inspect and if we scroll a bit up notice the form group name directive is set to zero and ng reflect name attribute is also set to zero we'll discuss the significance of this ng reflect name attribute in just a bit so that's our first form group let's collapse that and then we have our second form group right here notice again the form group name and ng reflect name are both set to zero and again here is the third form group both form group name and ng reflect name are set to zero that's because within the template we have hard coded the form group name to zero we want to dynamically set this so let's create a variable here i'm going to call it i and we are going to use the index value of the loop as the value for this variable and we want to bind our form group name directive to that variable i since we are binding to a variable we also have to use a pair of square brackets around this form group name directive the form is reloaded first let's generate another two sets of input elements let's inspect this first skill name text box notice we have our first form group here we only have ng reflect name attribute we don't have the form group name directive that's because we are binding the form group name directive to a variable and this ng reflect name attribute shows the binding value so here the first form group name is set to zero and we have our second form group right here and notice ng reflect name is set to one that's our second form group and our third form group is right here and if we take a look at ng reflect name it is set to two that's because we are binding to the loop variable i and it is zero index based so that's why the first form group has a name of zero second one has a name of one third one has a name of two so on and so forth at the moment there are several problems with these dynamically generated HTML input elements. Right now, on this form, we have three sets of input elements. And all these skill name text boxes have got the same ID value. Similarly, all the three experience text boxes have got the same ID value. So let's inspect this first skill name text box. Notice its ID is skill name. Similarly, when we inspect the second text box, its ID is also skill name not just the IDs of these input elements even the associated labels for these input elements here's the label for the second skill name text box and look at its for attribute value it is skill name and if we inspect this first one notice its label also has the value of skill name for the for attribute and now when we click on this label right here we expect this input element to receive focus but this element is going to receive the focus look at this when I click the focus is right here this is not the behavior we expect and this is happening because all these input elements have got the same IDs that's our first problem the second problem is our validation is not working at all in fact the validation is working erratically look at this when the last skill name text box receives focus and loses focus that's when we see the validation error on all the skill text boxes skill name is required even when we type a valid value the validation error does not disappear we'll discuss how to fix these in our upcoming videos so here are the three things that we have done to dynamically generate form groups and their associated 
HTML input elements. The first step is to include Add Skill button on our Create Employee form. And our second step is to include an event handler for the Add Skill button. When we click the button, we want to push a new form group into the Skills form array. Finally, loop over the Skills form array which contains our form groups and for each form group, create the associated HTML input elements. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.